But that's right, it's finally, finally, time to cover more version differences in Pokemon. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Generation 5 with Black and White, Black 2, and White 2. We'll start by comparing Black and White and then both of them to Black and White 2 while also comparing the latter two to each other. Hopefully it'll make more sense as we get through the video. Starting with Black and White, the introductions are identical, but the title screen features a different legendary Pokemon. Beyond the title screen, the color scheme for the menu is different in each version. As for version exclusives, in Black there's the Weedle, Murkrow, Houndour, Shroomish, Gothita, and Volibee lines, as well as Plusle, Tornadus, and Reshiram. In White you get the Caterpie, Pyrus, Mischievous, Poochyena, Solosis, and Rufflet lines, as well as Minin, Thunderous, and Zekrom. There are also a few more Pokemon that can only be found in the wild in one game, but can be obtained through different means in the other. For example, the cost and Petalil lines. While they cannot be found in the wild in both games, a version exclusive trade for the unavailable Pokemon can be made in that Queen City. Volbeat and Illumise also fit into this category, but whenever these Pokemon breed, the egg has a 50% chance of containing the other one. So you could get your Volbeat in black version, and then breed it with Ditto to get Illumise a little easier. And last of all, we have Huntail and Gorbis, which are exclusive through fishing spots. But seeing as you can still catch Clown Pearl in both, you can just evolve it the normal way too. Basculin is also a little bit strange. Under normal circumstances, the red striped one is exclusive to black and black 2, and the blue striped one is exclusive to white and white 2, but the alternate forms can be found in the other version through rippling spots. White also has all of these additional Pokemon available through the exclusive white forest area, but we'll see more of that later. There are a decent amount of differences throughout the region itself too. Upper Lucid City looks completely different between versions. In black it's a futuristic metropolis and has this super techno sounding theme with a keytar player. Whereas in white, the city looks much more old-fashioned and traditional. The music fits the town too, and the additional keytar has been replaced by an Urhu. Another tiny change would be the colouring of the dragon structures on the gym are reversed between versions. The gym itself also has a different leader in each version. In black you battle Drayden, whereas in white it's Iris. They battle with the same Pokemon, except Drayden's are all male while Iris's are all female. You're a girl dragon! Oh sure, I mean of course you're a girl dragon, cause you're just reeking of feminine beauty! Their Dredagon and Hexorus also have different abilities too. Mistralton City is also very similar to Opelucid with its differing themes between versions. In black, the edge of the city is covered in modern greenhouses, whereas in white, it's farmland. Two huge areas being Black City and White Forest are also entirely version exclusive. Both areas allow you to invite NPCs over from the other version using the Entrelink. The more NPCs in the area, the more features you'll have access to. In Black City, you can battle the NPCs and buy rare items from the market. In White Forest, you can encounter a lot of different Pokemon. Each NPC makes a specific Pokemon appear. They'll also drop items for you to pick up, which are the same as the selection of items you can get from Black City's marketplace. You can also get berries by showing specific Pokemon to the mayor. Rotation battles are mostly exclusive to Black, and triple battles to White, with the exception of Marvelous Bridges Glinda, who challenges you to a triple battle in Black and a rotation battle in White. The story in Black and White is pretty much the same in each version, with the cover legendary swapping roles between versions. In Black, you receive the Lightstone to awaken Reshiram, and N has Zegrom's Dark Zone, while the opposite is shown white. The final version difference for these games would be a Wi-Fi event released to promote the first two black and white movies. In black you get Zegrom and in white you get Reshiram. But with that, it's time to take a look at how Unova and its gameplay changed between black and white and its sequels. While all Pokemon follow-up versions up until this point had adjusted versions of the originals plot-wise, black and white 2 were the first true sequels in the series, taking place two years after the events of black and white. You get to play as the new protagonist Nathan Rosa, and face off against Getsus once again with his newly formed Team Plasma. There's a whole new cast of colourful characters, like your new rival Hugh, and Team Plasma's mysterious scientist Colress. Haha, <laughs> I made a joke? I called Colress a colourful character? When his name literally stems from the word colourless? 
As is the same with pretty much all paired versions, Black and White 2 play out the same way with little to no storyline changes, with the major difference being that you encounter either Black or White Kurum at the story's climax depending on your version. The footage playing now is actually from the new intro, which is very different from Black and White's. As for contrast between the paired versions, the only difference again is that a different Kurum form is shown in the intro and the title screen. That and the bars are called Black for Black 2 and White for White 2. Who would have thought? The colour scheme beyond the title screen is different as in the originals. The credits are also different, with a ton of images shown to represent your new journey with new background music too. Juniper's whole Welcome to the World of Pokemon speech is mostly the same, with the character choices obviously being different as well as the rival introduction. Juniper's Minchino is now a Shinchino, and cannot be shiny anymore. Thank you. The background is also different to match the colour scheme of the respective game. The storyline changes how you encounter some Pokemon. The climax of the main story happens at the deepest part of the giant chasm, and Kyurem can still be caught there after all of this, at a different level than in black and white. Cobalion, Terrakion and Verizion are all caught in different locations. Cobalion is on Route 13, Terrakion is on Route 22, and Verizion is on Route 11. You also don't have to encounter them in any particular order like you do in black and white. Thunderous, Tornadus and Landorus just aren't there at all. The way you get your starter is different, instead being given out by Bianca in Aspersia City. Instead of being given the cover of Plume Fossil by the Backpacker in Relic Castle, Lenora herself now gives you one in Nat Queen City. The rest of the fossils can still be given out by the guy in Twist Mountain, but you can also get more, including the cover in Plume Fossils from the antique shops too. You no longer get one of the Pan Monkeys from the Dream Yard or a Larvesta Egg, but a bunch of new gift Pokemon take their place. Does Amanita's Eevee, a dealing with its hidden ability from the Season Research Lab, a Happini Egg from a breeder in Nat Queen City's Gate, a Shiny Dratini, or Gibble, from Bengu in Flossessy Town, and in Dripvale City, Root gives you Enzorua. Speaking of Enz Pokemon, that's a pretty big thing too. After using a new feature which I'll mention later, Enz Pokemon from Black and White start appearing in the wild. Including Zorua, there are a total of 15 of these Pokemon. They have a special animation and different text when they're encountered, so they're pretty hard to miss. They also have set natures, 30 IVs in each stat, maxed out friendship and a predetermined trainer ID. Ends. Like in Platinum, these games feature an expanded Pokedex and non Unova Pokemon appear all over Unova now. You explore Unova in a different order from Black and White, so naturally almost all areas have a different selection of Pokemon at different levels from what they were in those games. For example, Route 1 is actually a post game area, so instead of having your level 2 to 4 Pachat and Lillipup, you've got Watchhog and Herdier in their late 50s. The upgraded Pokedex also has something called a Habitat List, which is essentially a database that lists all Pokemon available in each area as you encounter them. The Pokedex's interface also now sports red instead of green. Not only did these games introduce new Pokemon from other regions, there are also brand new forms of some of the Unova legendaries. Obviously there's Black and White Kurum, then the Therium forms of the Kami Trio, and Resolute form Keldeo. But with that, let's get on to version exclusive Pokemon. I'm not going to go over every new Pokemon introduced, but it is worth noting that Black and White 2 put a lot of legendary Pokemon from previous games throughout the Unova region. There's all four Regis, the Eon Duo, the Late Guardians, Heatran, and Cresselia. All of the version exclusives from the previous entry still apply to the sequels. As there's no need to go over all of them again, we'll get right into the new additions. Black 2 has the Spinarak, Magby, Bonsly, Spoink, Venuri, Stunky, and Gibble lines, as well as Latios and Zekrom slash Black Kyurem. White 2 has the Dratini, Ledibur, Elekid, Mime Jr., Skitty, Nummel, and Glammeow lines, as well as Latias and Reshiram slash White Kyurem. Something worth noting is that Zoro and Zoroark are completely unobtainable in black and white outside of events, but in black and white 2 they can be found in game. The swarms were also massively changed. To save time, I won't go over each one, but here are the lists of the swarms from the originals and the sequels. Pause if you want to. Regiice and Registeel are initially version exclusive, but they can be caught in the opposite versions via the transfer of their keys from game to game. Heracross and Pinsir are kinda weird too. In the wild they're exclusive to Black 2 and White 2, but can be found in the other versions through Lost Lawn and Hidden Grotto. There are also a few Pokemon that are not available in these games that were available in the original Black and White. This would include the Paris, Mistrevus, Houndour, Poochiana, and Shroomish lines, all of which were version exclusive before but now can't be found in either version. As we mentioned before, the Kami Trio in its entirety is also absent. The Swarms were also altered, which does add some new Pokemon to the mix but it also makes the Execute and Tyrog lines as well as Smeargle unobtainable outside of trading. Since the Liberty Pass was only released for Pokemon Black and White, Victini can't be caught there in Black and White 2. However, if you take a Victini there in these games, a short event will occur with Victini popping out of its Pokeball in the basement. Another event exclusive to Black and White would be the Zoro you receive in Castelia City, and the Zoroark from Lost Lawn Forest. And while obviously you can still obtain it through other means, you can no longer encounter the stationary Darmanitan in the Desert Resort. The in-game trades have all changed in some way from what they were in Black and White, and the new character 
Yancy or Curtis, depending on your gender, offers an even larger choice of trades later on in the game. There are now a lot more areas to access throughout Unova. First, there's Aspersia City, which is where you start out now instead of Nuvema Town. Routes 19 through 23 are all new. Other new towns would include Flossesy Town, Burbank City, Lentimas Town, and Humala City. Other new areas would include Flossesy Ranch, Reversal Mountain, Cave of Being, Castellia Sewer and Garden, Relic Passage, Clay Tunnel, Underground Ruins, Pledge Grove, Seaside Cave, and the Nature Preserve. You can now make movies in the new area Pokestar Studios above Burbank City. There's also the Plasma Frigate, which technically isn't part of the Unova region, but I guess it counts as an area? Hidden grottos are new mini areas on routes or other places that have the chance to contain rare Pokemon and items. It's interesting, because certain Pokemon are more or less likely to appear in the different versions in some areas. Say for example, in Lost Dawn's Hidden Grotto in Black 2, Pinsa is three times more likely to appear than Heracross, and vice versa in White 2. The same also goes for Pinwheel Forest with Hariyama and Medicham in the outer area, and Buzzafree and Beedrill in the inner area. That's about it for new areas, but a lot of existing areas change too, so let's take a look at them. There were a bunch of changes that apply to multiple areas, so to save going over all of them again, I'll just say them all in one go. Some rural pathways were redesigned, as were grass tiles. All types of water tiles were also redesigned. Houses here and there generally look the same, with a few redesigned. Route 10 was destroyed by a landslide and can't be accessed anymore, but you can still listen to that sweet music by talking to this guy. He's in the house in Icarus City that had the Team Rocket Grunt in this family. That house is now home to a Team Aqua and Magma Grunt couple instead. The rest of the city looks the same as it did before. One of the bridges saw a fancy revamp, and the broken one was completely removed. With Route 10 essentially erased from the map, the old Victory Road is gone too. The new one is now located at the end of Route 23, which still leads to the Pokemon Mon League in the end. The entrance to Challenger's cave collapsed, making the cave inaccessible. The majority of the Relic Castle's rooms have now become filled with sand. The first two floors are still accessible via the Desert Resort. A few of the rooms, including Volcarona's, are now accessed through the Relic Passage. Volcarona itself has dropped 30 levels between Black and White in its sequels, probably because it can now be caught during the main story. The cold storage area of Drift Vale City is no more, having been replaced with the Pokemon World Tournament. This place is no ordinary battling facility, it's huge! Gym League Leaders and champions from all past generations compete in all different tournaments and it's so cool! They all feature remastered themes too and it's so cool and I really like it and I can't battle so I'm sad. Dripvale City itself isn't too different. It got a fresh new set of floor tiles though, which is pretty cool. The bridge also looks a little fancier, and the houses look totally different. Village Bridge has had its restaurant replaced by a tennis court, and a basketball court has been added too. Obviously, Undela Town was altered to make space for the entrance to the Marine Tube and Reversal Mountain, but even aside from that, there are a lot of changes. The richest house has been knocked down and the town itself looks a lot more like a resort. Strucian City pretty much looks the same. Its gym has now been turned into a restaurant, and has been remodeled with its its own paving area. The daycare looks totally different too. Akumala Town looks a little messier in these games, and some of the walls and houses are covered in plant life. The girl who plays piano in the house now refuses to play unless you show her a Cricketot and a Wisma for some reason. Demanding. Nacreen City is essentially the same, with a prettier looking entrance to the museum, which also is not a gym now. Somehow Nimbasa City is even more colourful than before. A small Pichu statue is now next to the giant Pikachu, and Elisa's gym has been moved to this new building left of the Ferris Wheel. The old gym's building is still active, and has trainers you can battle. There's also a new area to the left of this with an Ordino statue. South of Nimbasa City is the newly added Join Avenue. This is a new area that particularly makes use of Wi-Fi communication features by expanding as you interact with more people. You can run a load of shops here and get items and services that aren't provided anywhere else. Lost Lawn Forest looks the same as it did in Black and White, after the Zoroark event, but the closed off look is exclusive to those games, along with the Zoroark event itself. It's cool because if you go to this location in the sequels, then you actually get to catch a quick glimpse of Zoroark after getting the TM Snarl. The giant chasm looks unrecognisable, with the centre having no tall grass at all, and the trees now being completely stripped and knocked over. Kyurem's cave also now has two chambers, with Kyurem being found in the back one. The gyms have all changed pretty drastically from their original appearances, and their order has changed significantly too. Badge 1 is now the basic badge, with Sharon as the Spursia City's gym leader. Badge 2 is now the toxic badge, with the new character Roxy as Verbank City's gym leader. Badge 7 is now Drayden in the same location, and Badge 8 is now Marlon in the new Humala City. The gyms remaining from the original all had their layouts completely changed and different trainers added. All gyms now have their own unique music to help represent the theme of their gym better. Here's a little snippet of each one so that you know what I'm on about.
The Elite Four are the same from Black and White, and they've had their rooms changed up too. The returning gym leaders in the Elite Four all had their teams changed to fully show off the expanded Pokedex. Iris is now the new champion, and her room looks totally different from Alder's. You do get to battle Alder in Velocity Town later on though. Route 4 has changed drastically from what it was like in Black and White, but this area actually differs in appearance between the sequels as well. In Black 2, it's had many buildings put up throughout the whole route, whereas in White 2, there are still buildings, but they're in different locations and are visibly worn down by the sandstorm. In these sequels, Route 4 also has a stationary and counterable Pokemon that differs by version. Mandibuzz for Black 2 and Braviary for White 2. The entry link also saw a significant redesign. Black City and White Forest are also a little different. All communication features affecting them were removed. You can increase the city's occupancy by clearing floors at a new facility Black Tower, an area that you can't access until you battle order in Flossacy Town post Elite 4. It's basically just a facility where you battle a bunch of trainers on each floor, and then a super special boss trainer. Oh, and there's 10 floors. End my submarine. White Forest has no more patches of grass or ponds outside at all, so now there's no way to encounter any Pokemon here. There's the addition of the White Tree Hollow, which is essentially just Black Tower, except with different trainers. Once you beat Bengo on the 10th floor of both places, you get the Tower or Tree Hollow key, which allows you to access both of these locations in the same gate if you transfer the key. The only real difference is that if you keep going to the 10th floor of Black Tower in Black 2, Bengo will be the boss trainer every time, but if you do it in White 2, he'll be the boss once, and then in subsequent visits just bugger off. Out of here, lol. And leave some random girl called Jana to do his job. The same goes in Black 2 for the White Tree Hollow, except this time he leaves it to Jariel. <laughs> like, I get that they had this whole alphabetical thing going on with the boss trainers, but they picked some of the most random names possible. Anyway, Reversal Mountain's interior is different in each version. In White 2, it's filled with hot lava and is known for its many recent eruptions, whereas in Black 2, it's a dormant volcano full of water pools. You could almost say that Reversal Mountain's role is reversed between games. <laughs> The layout of the Plasma Frigate is different between versions, with an entirely different assortment of trainers being present in each version, and it even requires different puzzles to be completed in order to progress. The new Victory Road is also slightly different between versions, with you taking a slightly different path to reach the same location. The trainers are the same here, but they're scattered through different locations in each version. Now here's the section where I cover a ton of miscellaneous changes between the originals and the sequels. A few sprites and designs for characters and Pokemon were changed. As a couple of years have passed since the sequels, Bianca and Sharon have changed a lot too and they have completely different designs. Elisa in the two year gap has focused much more on her modeling career and has a very different look to reflect this. Iris now sports a beautiful dress in her redesign as Champion of Unova, and Getsis is now dressed in all black. As for Pokemon, the only one I can think of would be Cosinese which looks very different. If there are any others then the changes are likely minuscule. Like older Sprite for example. Yeah sure it's technically different between versions, but only because of a tiny change in contrast and a couple of pixels being a different color. A few overworld sprites do have noticeable differences, like N Sisters, as well as Ingo and Emmett. While not all characters were redesigned, all trainers were given fully animated sprites in Black and White 2, while previously this was only true of some significant trainers. Sprites also have more frames of animation so they look smoother too. While Cynthia can still be battled in Undella Town, her team has changed a little. She's removed her Braviary and Electros in favor of Togekiss and Glaceon. Her whole team is one level higher than in Black and White, and the Pokemon that remain the same have different movesets too. Another tiny change that probably only I would even obsess over is that her battle theme is the slightest bit faster and higher pitched than in Black and White. And mind you, Black and White's was already a step up from Diamond and Pearls. Take a quick listen to all three and you'll see what I mean. It just gets faster and faster each time, right? I mean, just take a listen to the preview from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Someone's gonna take that seriously, I swear. Caitlyn's Villa does still get visitors other than Cynthia, like in Black and White. Lenora and Iris don't visit in Black and White 2 as they're no longer gym leaders, but Elisa, Skylar, Chantal, Caitlyn herself, and now Roxy will visit instead. There are also different battles with N now available in the ruins of his castle, with his teams changing depending on the season. Carrying on from our topic of music, Guess This has a new theme too which is pretty much just an amped up version of the original. There are also some tracks that were slightly remixed between the originals and the sequels. For example, let's take a listen to the gym leader themes.
It's very slight, but you can definitely hear a difference. And Seam also has a cool new spin. With there being more characters and areas in the games too, there are also a lot of completely new themes. I can't possibly list them all, but I'll let you take a quick listen to some of my favorites. The battle stages in Tallgrass, Caves, Sand, Water and Marshland are all changed to include more natural details. The Tallgrass stages even change appearance depending on what season you're playing in. PC boxes also have added functionality. You can now take a look at the contents of a box using a new simplified interface, and even move multiple Pokemon at once. I have so much power now. Box wallpapers are something I love and of course there are exclusive groups with the originals and the sequels. This time you don't have to do anything fancy to unlock them, other than completing requirements in the main story. Now during the day, if you step out of certain buildings, then a ray of light will spread across the screen. The items that you can get from dust clouds are different between games. In the sequels you can now find shards, and hard stones are no longer available. Not that you see me complaining, because you get way too many of those things from antique shops. Seriously. Pickup items have also been tweaked a little, with a couple of slots being shuffled to make up for the fact that they removed Lucky Eggs. The bag has been redesigned once again, and there's a new pouch called Free Space where you basically just put whatever you want in it. There are also a bunch of new key items that are either related to legendaries or key points in the story. Once the regional Pokedex has been completed, you'll receive the new Oval Charm item from Professor Juniper. This makes Pokemon produce eggs faster in the daycare. As for the National Pokedex, once you complete that you get the Shiny Charm, which makes finding shiny Pokemon a lot easier. The animation for some moves are changed. Examples of this would be Outrage and Head Charge. The HP bar has a new look, and actually looks different depending on whether you're playing Black 2 or White 2. The weather icons during battle look a bit different too. Once again, the area markers have been redesigned, and now show the season at the bottom of the screen too. They're also now black or white to fit each version. As well as the map being updated to accommodate all the new areas, the locations that were green circles in the originals are now squares, and light up red when they're tapped. It's very slight, but the upper screen has been redesigned and now sports blue instead of teal. The entire bottom screen menu has been redesigned, and now has a different colour scheme for each version. The Pokemon menu has changed a little bit, with the previews being a different shape. The summary screen is mostly the same, with a slight change in colour and the size of the moving squares. The header is now blue and has a different font too. The save menu is different, as well as the options menu. While obviously the gym badges section now has the updated gym leaders in it, it's been completely redesigned too. The feature of rubbing dirt off the badges is now gone and they now all make a different note as you tap them, as opposed to the bland noise used before. The battle menu also has a completely different look too, which is now also coloured differently in each version. The text bar, the Pokemon's moves and summary when viewed from battle are also also different. A new feature introduced in the sequels would be medals. There are 255 of these which are given out for just about everything, from seeing all the bridges in Unova to defeating the Pokemon League with a single Pokemon and everything in between. The name rater is still in Castelia City as in the originals, but is now in a different building instead. The move reminder and deleter are now in the Pokemon World Tournament instead of Mr. Alton City. As for move tutors, Draco Meteor and Relic Song are still learned in the same place, but Secret Sword is now learned in Pledge Grove instead of the more Vicarious. Frenzy Plant, Blast Burn, Hydro Cannon, and the Pledge moves are now learned at the Pokemon World Tournament. Black and White 2 also has new move tutors, located in Driftvale City, Lentimas Town, Humalau City, and Nakreen City. They teach a wide variety of moves in exchange for shards. There are a bunch of new NPCs all throughout Unova. Loads of the same NPCs do still exist in the same locations, and a lot of them have the text edited from what it was in the originals, but they'll still be talking about the same subject, which I think is pretty clever. Most items, TMs, and HMs are obtained in different locations. Snarl, a TM only available through an unreleased event, is also now accessible in game 2. Something that technically isn't a version difference because it's tied into the story, is that you actually get two Master Balls through normal means. I just felt like mentioning that because it's pretty cool. The Cross Chance Evo also has two new minigames as well, being Balloon Catch and Balloon Smash. It's been five years and I didn't even know the Cross Chance Evo had minigames. 
The Sea Gear received a massive redesign. It also has these really cool customizable skins which were released through various means. There are two groups of available Sea Gear skins for the originals and the sequels. Some cross over into both of the Sea Gear designs, and so were available in all Generation 5 games. But some of them were completely version exclusive. The Kanto Trio Pokedex game was also only available in black and white, while in black and white 2, three new Pokedex skins were released, designed after certain characters. The downloadable Pokemon Musical Smash was only available in black and white while the musical Carnivaludicolo was only available in Black and White 2. As for other events, there are a few Wi-Fi events that were only available in certain versions. For Black and White, this would include Mewtwo, Darkrai, Victini, as well as the Reshiram and Zekrom events mentioned earlier. For Black and White 2, there was Genesect, Keldeo, and Deoxys. There were also more version-exclusive events through Global Link promotions and in-person events, but if I listed them all, then we'd be here all day. So let's move on. Pokemon breeding mechanics have changed, with Black and White 2 being the first game to have Everstones pass down a parent Pokemon's nature. Speaking of breeders, they now rematch you every time you cross their line of sight. I didn't know this until recently, and got increasingly annoyed every time I entered those areas. Past powers return from black and white, with three more types thrown in. These would be Search Power, which increases the chances of shaking spots and so on appearing, Hidden Grotto Power, which makes Hidden Grottos more likely to appear, and Charm Power, which makes rare Pokemon more likely to appear. In place of Black and White Centralink missions, Funfest missions are now available instead, which unlike the former, doesn't require other people to play, which is good for me because I don't have friends to do that with. I mean, what? The Unova Link is a new system in Black and White 2 that contains quite a few new features. One of these would be the Memory Link, which is unlocked by connecting with the Black or White version. It allows you to see flashbacks that took place between the originals and the sequels, giving a lot of the characters more depth. You do, however, need to have progressed far enough in the original Black and White to unlock certain flashbacks. Memory Link is also how you introduce N's Pokemon into the wild, and it also lets you battle Sharon and Bianca in New Vemmertown using their original black and white teams. The key system is also pretty important. We did touch on it before, but it's the overall name for the system used to transfer the keys needed to unlock certain features in different versions like Black City and White Forest, as well as the Regis. This is also where you access Black and White 2's new difficulty settings, which is an interesting new concept, but it can't be unlocked until you become champion. Easy mode is unlocked in White 2, and challenge mode is unlocked in Black 2. To get them both in one game, you just connect with the other version and send the key over. Finally, we have the Nintendo 3DS Link, which is used to connect the game Pokemon Dream Radar, which can be used to receive Pokemon and items. It's actually the only way to get the Kami Trio in these games without trading from the original Black and White and one of the best miscellaneous changes would be the fact that now when Repel runs out, it gives you the option to spray another one. Gone are the days of having to reach all the way into your bag and grab another Repel because now the game does it for you. Doesn't it feel satisfying? Hey Lucy, what is it Gilbert? Uh, your pasta's overcooking. What's that? You say there's a feature even more groundbreaking than the new Repel mechanic? That can't be! That's not what I said. Thank you Gilbert, I'll take it from here. What could be even more shocking than the previous point? Prepare yourselves. Get this. In Black and White 2, it was changed so that your boy Watchhog gives out not one, but two attack EVs after defeat. <laughs> but I think that's a rather fitting way to round off this video. That was the long awaited Generation 5 version differences. I hope now you can understand why this took me so long, with it being the longest trivia video on my channel by a long stretch. I want to thank you so much for sticking around, and thanks so much for 250k! I also made a few more videos this week to celebrate this milestone, including my first shiny in forever, as well as a super old booster box opening. If you're interested, then be sure to check some of those out too! I know it was ages ago, so if you're new to my channel, then this video is actually one in a series of videos that I've done about version differences in Pokemon games. I have a ton more covering the rest of the generations too. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!